Hello, everyone. Welcome to another capsule on international relations for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today, we discuss the new Quad, which has just been formed a few days ago. The tendency these days is not to rely as much on United Nations because of the weaknesses of the system. And the tendency seems to be for more and more groups to be formed because United Nations is not able to exert its influence because of the various aspects like the region. So this has to be seen, this uh, emerging groups in different areas and different parts of the world should be seen in this context. E20, for example, has uh, assumed significance. G7. So these activities were there, but they did not come center stage. And those were side discussions. And the main discussion was at the United Nations. So this is a new trend that we have to notice. And um, now there are three quads already. The first one we all know about, 2007 it started, India, the United States, Australia, and Japan. It has gone through various stages. At one time it was considered a military pact, but now with the formation of AUKUS, uh, it's become a more economic, environment-oriented uh, group. And so the concentration is on economic development and stability, maritime security, etc. in the Indian Ocean. The second quad was formed by the United States with Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Uzbekistan. We don't hear much about it. But this must have been some kind of a balancing that the US did in order to please Pakistan, perhaps, because how can Pakistan not be in some quad with the United States? And so they took on Afghanistan and uh, Uzbekistan also the quad. But this will have no meaning unless Afghanistan becomes a normally administered country. And that is why we don't hear much about it. And then the third quad is somewhat surprising that so far our concentration was towards the east of India. And now we are for the first time some kind of a new arrangement to the west of India. And this, is, this was not possible earlier because the Middle East was in chaos, uh, to so many conflicts, Palestine issue was significant, Israel was not very um, welcome to several Middle East countries. And so the situation was very complex. So we could only deal with individual countries. Of course, there are the League of Arab States, which we dealt with. But basically, our Middle East policy was uh, uh, individual bilateral relationships. And with most of these countries, we had good bilateral relations. Uh, but we were not very much involved in the politics of the Middle East, except at the United Nations. It was left basically to the five permanent members, particularly the United States, to deal with the Middle East. And the United States has been handling it with their own power and energy. Uh, but sometimes they you know, uh, gave away some of the responsibility to Russia. And um, uh, some arrangements were made by which the United States took back and Russia dealt, uh, dealt with some of these issues. But the dramatic change that took place is the Abraham Accords, for which we have to be grateful to President Trump, particularly his son-in-law, who seems to have managed this whole uh, um, arrangement, by which more countries recognized Israel. Of course, Egypt was the first to recognize Israel in 1979. Others have done that. But one of some of the major countries, particularly in the Gulf, uh, were not receptive to the idea of establishing diplomatic relations with uh, Israel. And now we have Bahrain and uh, UAE, and there could be others. Saudi Arabia is waiting. So uh, the time is coming for Israel and Arab countries to establish at least some kind of working relationship. But the hostility will remain as long as Palestine does not have a state. But uh, regardless of that, uh, there have been many changes. And uh, if you go to Dubai these days, the one thing that we see all around is Israeli investment. With the Expo 70, the Expo is already on. And um, there also you will find a big participation from Israel. And the investments are growing. Direct flights are going to Israel. These were things un unthinkable 
a few months earlier. So this is being reflected in this new quad which has developed because the United States, UAE and Israel have been working together. And in fact, just before this new, new court was formed, these three countries had uh, held a meeting in Washington five days before the new court was established. But the new court was established in a very interesting way for us because our external affairs minister was in Israel at that time on a bilateral visit. And he was meeting the so-called alternate prime minister and foreign minister. And into that came virtually the uh, Secretary of State of the United States and, and the UAE foreign minister. And so it was a hybrid meeting where two important uh, representatives that Israel and India were present physically and uh, United States and UAE were uh, represented by their ministers uh, virtually. So they announced this uh, formation of this group and um, it was quite obvious that the focus here will be more on economic development because this is to facilitate, facilitate the, the compatibility among these four countries. Uh, for example, Israel has a lot of innovation, innovative capability. UAE has plenty of money to invest in various uh, uh, projects. India has the manufacturing capacity. If they have the innovative project and give us the money, we may be able to produce a good quality uh, consumer goods and others. And of course, the United States giving its uh, political and economic uh, strength. So it looks very convincing that such a group was possible, and, uh, but it was not considered possible till a few months ago. And that's why this came as a surprise. And um, this, this adds a new dimension to India's policy towards the Middle East. Because, because of our position supportive of Palestine and not engaged very much with the other, uh, you, other um, Arabic, Arab countries after Israel was recognized by, by Egypt, etc. So we were not involved in any particular process in the region, but our relations with the uh, UAE had uh, developed very fast after the prime minister's visit. And um, uh, with Saudi Arabia also, we have uh, excellent relations. And therefore, the Middle East now, we are uh, a normal country with good relations with all of them. And therefore, this arrangement, though it has been controversial in India before, how much relationship you must have with Israel, Will you dilute your position on uh, Palestine? Such questions were raised. But those have disappeared because of the realization in India also. Uh, even among circles who are uh, championing Palestine, uh, that Israel would be a useful ally. Of course, there is this uh, complication about Pegasus, which you heard today that the Supreme Court has uh, ordered an investigation or an inquiry or a study or whatever on Pegasus. And that may create compli complicated matters a little bit because it is Israel which has produced it. And we do not know if the government of India purchased it or you, who used it, who purchased it, etc. But this came before that. And um, so the focus is uh, very much on um, economic cooperation and it says so. So with the establishment of UAE and uh, diplomatic relations between the UAE and Israel, this became possible. And uh, the, the agenda is enhanced economic cooperation. Uh, they have talked about economic growth and global issues. And um, interestingly enough, Mr. Jay Shankar uh, flew from UAE to Israel, another unusual event, because you would have had to go through various other countries in order to go to Israel, because if you have Israel's uh, visa on your passport, the next time you may not be able to enter Arab countries. So such complications. Uh, that seems to have disappeared. And uh, the possibilities of infrastructure development has been particularly emphasized at this time when there is uh, Expo 2021 taking place in, uh, in Dubai. So in the, in, by way of uh, economic and political cooperation in the Middle East, this is a very important uh, landmark. 
And uh, the other items which have been uh, identified are um, so naturally climate change, because we are about to go to a uh, climate change meeting. Then there's energy cooperation related to the environment and maritime security, which is of great interest to all of us, particularly those in the country, in the Gulf, and with uh, so many of us, so many Indians there, <laughs> the security of these countries is of uh, concern yeah, to us. Then transportation is the main theme in the context of the, um, the expo, because um, connectivity, as you know, there is a competition between BRI. <coughs> China's BRI believes in building connectivity of various ways. And uh, now there is increasing suspicion about uh, BRI. And therefore, an alternative people were looking at. And uh, one of them, and this one is basically thinking in terms of um, establishing some kind of a linkage, uh, travel, and uh, also you know, technological uh, linkages between all these groups. So obviously, when US, Israel, and UAE met in Washington just a week before, uh, they must have talked about uh, the possibility of bringing India into the uh, group. And uh, in the Washington meeting, uh, they uh, stressed particularly religious coexistence because Israel, United States, and UAE is very important to make sure uh, that um, uh, religious coexistence is possible. And that was emphasized because the problems in the Middle East was basically because of that, the conflict between religions. And uh, the other two things that they identified in that Washington meeting where India was not there, was water and energy. So all this uh, mixes very well. And so the idea is that Israeli innovation, UAE funding, and Indian manufacturing with the patronage of the United States. So that looks like a very good mix. Of course, politics is not, not mixed with it because there was no reference ever, anywhere in any of the conversations about Palestine and the issue, the burning issue in the Arab world. So obviously, this group is not going to, you know, uh, walk into uh, the political problems. And, but of course, the American position has not changed. They are still talking about uh, two-state solution, which is India's suggestion also. And therefore, there is no contradiction in our working with uh, the United States in the Middle East. Israel knows very well our position, and they have accepted that India has championed Palestine. And so they don't really dispute the fact that Palestine should have a, a homeland, but where it should be and how it should be established is really a question. But then India and Israel have been uh, discussing a free trade agreement, and that is another fashionable thing these days. Many free trade agreements has, are being signed, and uh, because the WTO, uh, is not as active as it should have been. And therefore, the failure of the UN on the one side and the failure of WTO on the other are making all these changes in the, in the global situation, both economic and uh, political. And uh, among other things, they also uh, discussed um, a mutual recognition of COVID certification, which is a, an issue globally. We have a problem, as you know, or or vaccine is not being recognized by everyone. And um, so at least among these four countries, there will be no issue. Already, I think uh, UAE is recognizing our COVID shield injections, vaccination. Because vaccination, as you know, is a big issue now. Because the only solution you can find for COVID-19 has been established is to vaccinate everybody. At least reduce the risk to a great extent. 80 to 90% risk is reduced if everybody is vaccinated. But um, everybody has to be vaccinated, then only it will be a complete effect. So that has been taken into account. And then um, International Solar Alliance, which is promoted by India, there are several other countries. France is a major partner. Now the idea is to increase solar energy production. In this also, um, Israel has tremendous amount of technology, which it can share. And, uh, and UAE and India 
have a lot of sunshine and therefore we may be able to move towards uh, solar energy in a major way uh, and this will come in, dis um, in discussion at uh, glasgow when we talk about uh, carbon free year that every country is being asked to declare a carbon free year the united states at 2030 china at 2050 there's a lot of debate you must have seen in the newspapers as to what india should be doing and um, the feeling is that among uh, climatologists is that India will not be able to fix a year like that because if you fix then you have to fulfill it. But in the near future, unless our alternate energy is available in plenty, India will not be able to make a declaration. But uh, and also India's capability will depend on what kind of resources and what kind of technology we can get from the West. But the fact that uh, this quad the, the Western Quad, we can call it, but the other one is a Eastern Quad to make a difference between the two. Uh, so this idea of uh, uh, dealing with uh, climate change and environment in general, um, it is quite clear that <clears throat> these four countries can work together very, very closely as a unique array of capabilities, knowledge and experience among all of us. So, um, United States is, uh, uh, is very much involved in the Middle East. And as I said, it was the process that the United States initiated that resulted in the Abraham Accords. And it is expected that many more countries will establish relations with, uh, 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 with uh, Israel. And uh, here the one question is, you know, the Eastern Quad is suspected to be anti-Chinese. So is there an anti-China element in the Western Quad? Is something that we have to uh, think about. Uh, because um, China is getting closer to Iran. And um, so it's not only in the Asia Pacific, but also on the surroundings of the Gulf they see a threat in the new you know, cooperation and uh, agreement and projects between China and uh, uh, Iran. And this is a matter of concern to the Gulf countries, because Israel has always been concerned about Iranian nuclear capability. And if there's one country which is willing to go to war with Iran on nuclear capability is Israel. Nobody else wants a war, but Israel is very much against raising any of the sanctions against Israel against Iran uh, till Iran completely stops enriching of uranium and uh, it has to give up its uh, path and the negotiations are not moving very well in Geneva and therefore there is concern. So it is possible that there is an element of uh, China phobia, I would say, xenophobia, I shall call it. Uh, fear of China is also in this part. Of course, it never came out, nobody spoke about it. But um, uh, Israel uh, has that concern, and UAE has that concern, and we also have that concern, and the United States, of course. So uh, it may be true to say that even though that is not a declared purpose of the new Quad, um, there is an element of um, uh, China, containment of China, or at least uh, you know, build your uh, guard against, uh, against China. And um, as far as uh, nuclear matters is concerned, Israel was very supportive of India's nuclear deal with the United States. And um, UAE uh, has not only really been close to us, it has also been, though it is not confirmed that UAE has been helping India, Pakistan to get together. Of course, nothing concrete has happened, but we have heard rumors that you have, UAE has been facilitating the, the back-channel exchanges uh, between India and Pakistan, which led to the uh, ceasefire enforcement and also some other developments. But uh, of late, we are seeing increased uh, terrorist activities in Kashmir, uh, which has uh, cast a shadow. But at least UAE has been helpful uh, in uh, uh, bringing about some kind of a dialogue with, between India 
and Pakistan. So there are interconnected realities here. So Israel's support for nuclear India within the agreement, its opposition to Iran's nuclear policy, China-Iran uh, cooperation causing concern to UAE also. And uh, China has been active in UAE, they have made a lot of investment and uh, much has been done by China. Uh, but there also they want to diversify and uh, relation with India as well as Israel. And of course, the United States, I think it is the most uh, um, useful uh, arrangement. Of course, we do not know the mechanism, what kind of uh, laws they will have, what kind of suggestions they will make. Basically, they will have probably free trade agreement either as a group or individually with these countries, that would be the basic thing. And, um, and uh, even when we talk of India and Israel and the Middle East, uh, we also have to think of terrorism, which is one of the greatest concerns that India has, as you have seen recently in the United Nations Security Council. Um, we proposed a number of things relating to uh, anti-terrorist activities that you have been pursuing. And in this uh, anti-terrorism, both Israel and UAE have a big role because UAE is a very open country and prosperous country and uh, it can easily be victimized by some countries which are hostile to it. And also there are many possibilities of corruption and so on. And therefore they are very concerned. If you have an open society like that, at least economically, uh, they have concerns about terrorism also. And one of the reasons why UAE is not that close to Pakistan anymore and closer to India because of their fear that Pakistan might use the terrorist tactics to deal with uh, the region as a, as a whole. So the, this squad, in fact, deals with a lot of, you are killing several birds with one stone in that sense because it assures uh, economic cooperation, it assures technological cooperation, it assures some kind of uh, protection against China, and also it has uh, uh, the, the common links among the four of us, uh, trade talks, maritime security is of uh, great interest. And um, so generally, uh, we are, uh, I'm happy, I think I mean, nobody seems to be criticizing this in India. And um, of course, this is a <coughs> new multilateral approach that India has adopted. That is wherever possible, uh, we get into these groupings. I had written some time ago uh, questioning this wisdom of this because uh, these groupings should have some homogeneity. That was my point. Because sometimes if you get into a group, as it happened in the case of SARC, for example. You know, the, the commonality among SARC countries has disappeared because we have so many disputes among ourselves until we have SARC. APEC, India has not been able to enter because the countries are blocking India from going there. So where you need to go, you are not able to go. And then you go where you are not uh, able to get anything out of it, like SCO, Shanghai Cooperation uh, also. Again, when the Afghanistan was discussed, they had an internal meeting between uh, Iran, China, and Russia, when we were also members of that group. So the group took one position, and the group inside SEO took another position. And then uh, BRICS, not very effective, and it killed something called IPSA, which is already there, India, Brazil, South Africa. So these, what I call the alphabetic soup, you know, all over the place, so many we are in. And now we are creating more. So I think we should think in terms of the sunrise coalitions and sunset coalitions. Because what happens is once you get into a coalition like SARC, now people are saying we must re revive it. So these are embarrassing moments and therefore we have to be very careful. Uh, but um, that's my view. But the general policy is to create these pockets of influence and uh, multilateral approaches. And that gives you ability to operate as a group 
and not as India alone, but as Israel, UAE, and the United States, that gives us greater strength in bargaining. That is the whole thing about group uh, diplomacy, you know, like a non-aligned movement, G77, and these are these were weak countries at that time. So it was easier for India to speak in the name of non-aligned movement rather than as India. Of course, now we don't want to have that requirement. It has become, uh, you know, important enough to stand on its own. Uh, but voluntarily, we are getting into these groups because of the ineffectiveness of the United States, United Nations, which was demonstrated during the during the pandemic. Of course, needless to say that uh, in this squad also. There are discussions about the pandemic, about the vaccines, about vaccine equity, and so on. Israel had virtually vaccinated everybody. And India also has now surplus capacity to give to other countries. And um, uh, China had given vaccines to UAE, but that has not been very found very satisfactory. Those who have taken the uh, Chinese uh, vaccine are now taking additional American vaccines in the UAE. So, and these uh, things were also um, certainly have uh, influenced the thinking of this group. And India's own policies and priorities are shifting from South Asia to larger Asia Pacific, India Pacific, and also the Middle East. So we are very close to Middle East in the early days when uh, um, Israel and Palestine were created theoretically. And we had, uh, but after that, very many things happened. The, um, the revolution, Arab revolution, Arab Spring, and various other things. And um, different kinds of governments came to power, and that's still being sorted out. Uh, but um, South, East, South Asia, of course, we have major interests, and that is our neighborhood. Uh, but it's always good to have uh, distant neighbors. You know, you must have all heard about the Chanakya theory. That is very difficult for you to have friendships with your close neighbors, because they always have complaints, demands, all kinds of uh, difficulties. Chanakya had predicted it centuries ago, and that we have seen ourselves. But those who are the next level, next line of our neighborhood, the distant neighbors will be closer because we have no um, boundary disputes. We do not have the challenge of uh, sharing resources, etc. Et and I think we are following Chanakya's theory that South Asia, let it be, we'll try our best to keep it together and work together. And we have gone out of our way to be nice to all these our countries. But there is still dissatisfaction, still there is terrorism, still there is lack of uh, trust. So all these are issues which have to be dealt with. And therefore, it might be good for us to expand ourselves a little bit. So now we have one quad in the Pacific, in the Indo-Pacific, and the other in the Middle East. And that is um, how we should, we should see it. And um, it will certainly improve our own economic growth. And um, uh, China recognized Israel only in 1992. And uh, Israel has uh, systematically uh, declined to export uh, arms to uh, China. So between them, there is a certain amount of, uh, uh, amount of uh, uh, differences. Um, so the um, uh, US, in fact, had asked Israel not to export weapons to China. And uh, China, uh, there, was some, there was some military ties between Israel and China that has been stopped. And the, China was not involved in any infrastructure projects in Israel. U UAE also has been benefiting from Chinese uh, investments, but they are also diversifying it. So in a sense, we can say that uh, this squad had a logic of itself for all these countries to work together. And um, the developments between Iran and China 
had uh, created problems for us also, as well as for the Arab countries. So our cooperation in the petrochemical sector will be of great value in this. So considering all these political and economic uh, considerations, uh, we can think that the new quad will be in our interest. But uh, there will be many things to sort out. Uh, people are writing about the vast possibility of our being able to export to Europe via the Middle East. May not, maybe a little far away, uh, but the idea that to a Greek port, we could send goods from India uh, with the collaboration of UAE and Israel. And there are many things, there are several projects which we are being mentioned are in the pipeline. So let's hope that this uh, quad will be beneficial to all the four of us and United States will maintaining its interest in this group because they also feel that instead of confronting China alone, it might be useful for them to operate through, through these groups. So this is the change of you know, sign of uh, the times of uh, several multilateral bodies uh, helping, shall we say, the United Nations. It's not in competition with the United Nations. Uh, but the general feeling that the United Nations is not able to pull its weight is a factor which promotes this regional cooperation. Of course, mercifully in the UN Charter, there, is, there are provisions for uh, regional arrangements. So this is not something which was not expected when the United Nations was set up. And uh, so there is a logic in that. And many of these groups are kind of registered with the United Nations. So they are taken notice of, they even report their activities. So there's a certain amount of coordination. Uh, but this is more practical to have these groups. And that is why India has gone for this. I don't know whose initiative it was, maybe Israel, maybe India, maybe we, maybe the United States. So in any case, all, all the four people are dreaming the same, even though they are in four different beds. And that is the situation we have. And this may perhaps be good for us and good for the world. Thank you very much. No, it doesn't, because the United States also support two states, and even Israel doesn't rule that out. So there is no reason for us to change in this. But then I think they have very cleverly avoided any discussion of political questions. Definitely economic advantages, petrochemicals, infrastructure. As I said, it was very well spelled out. They said the innovation of Israel the money of UAE, the manufacturing capacity of India, and uh, the patronage of the United States. So the areas have been very well defined, and only new policy, new projects have to be devised. That is probably the. Yes, our idea is to have a multi uh, polar world. From the bi bipolar, we we went to unipolar, and now we want a multipolar world. So the more partnerships that we create among like-minded countries will help us to perhaps create a pole around us. That is our unspoken wish. But when, you, when six poles are formed in the world, starting with the United States, European Union, Russia, China, and Japan, and the sixth will be India. That's the unspoken expectation. And for that, who are going to be our friends? Who are going to follow us? In South Asia, it's difficult, and therefore we may have to go far afield. And that is probably what we are doing. That we have to see, because uh, this, this squad is not going to consider political issues. Uh, if anything, this might only make Chinese even more worried about us. Because this grouping, because both UAE and Israel have been having an easy relationship with China. And therefore, India going and joining that group may actually worsen the situation. But as I've spoken to you about, China itself is going through an internal uh, process. 
And so they may not worry about it at this point in time. They are reorganizing themselves economically. Uh, but um, the tension with Pakistan and China, I don't, I don't think this will have any particular impact. I think there was some talk of uh, our meeting the Taliban in Doha. Uh, but um, so far, there is no agreement. The only positive thing that we have been saying is that we are happy to provide humanitarian assistance. And uh, once a modality is fixed as to how this assistance would be delivered and to whom, India will be one of the first countries to go forward. That's all the only thing that we are doing on all political matters we are holding back and wanting to wait for others. Because originally three, only those countries have embassies there. And no new country has gone there, only China, Pakistan, and uh, Iran. So if there is a growth in that, that may be the time we may have to think in terms of that. But everybody is in touch with Taliban. And uh, there is no lack of communication, including us. So let's hope um, this will be for the good. Thank you.